In Amravati, a quiet revolution is taking place, one that could define India's step in quantum technology. I'm joined by IBM uh, from the core team that is looking into what is going to be the quantum technology and quantum ecosystem that will be built here in Amravati. Sir, thank you so much for speaking with us. Sir, first and foremost, this quantum ecosystem that uh, we are bringing in. As part of IBM, what are the kind of measures that you are planning to bring in here in Amravati for you know ease of doing business? So, here, you know, there's a tremendous opportunity to create an ecosystem that thrives and creates an opportunity for business in the quantum sector. Right? And once we bring the machine here and uh, it creates the excitement, the Andhra Pradesh government is looking to create facilities for startups and researchers to actually come here, do algorithms discovery, create applications, engage the industry users. I think that is going to create new businesses uh, for India, for Andhra Pradesh. And uh, that's how it's going to drive a cycle, virtuous cycle of you know, new businesses, ease of business in the quantum sector in the country. You know, we're always looking at the kind of development that is taking place, be it 20 years before now and 20 years later on as well. Talking about the kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, in quantum tech, what are the kind of developments that we can uh, be able to foresee in the future, especially with IBM bringing, you know, IBM bringing in a lot of uh, more to the table? So the promise of quantum computing is tremendous uh, because it's a new kind of computing, not like our classical zeros and ones. It actually uses the quantum mechanics principles, the quantum physics principles. And that opens up the door to some of the very difficult computational problems. For example, simulating nature. You know, if you want to simulate how the lithium uh, reaction happens in a battery to find new kinds of battery that are more efficient, or if you want to understand how to do nitrogen fixation for fertilizer more efficiently, or to do carbon capture, carbon dioxide recapture for creating hydrocarbons for, uh, you know, green energy. All of these today are limited by our computational capacity, and so we have to rely on wet lab experiment. But we can speed all of that up. Drug discovery, we can speed that up. And once this develops in the coming years, as quantum computing, the technology advances, and the startups and researchers find new algorithms and applications, this can bring things that used to take years, like drug discovery, down to months or weeks even. I think there's tremendous value in that. What is our goal with respect to the Gen AI moment? Uh, is there a specific standard or a degree that we've set uh, in the near future or is it something that is evolving as you know, newer uh, developments take place? I think with Gen AI, there is definitely an, a tremendous opportunity of, if you look at our country, there's an opportunity to overcome the barriers in our country that have that you know hold us back from our full potential the tremendous diversity we have uh, the citizenry we have the youth we have I think the potential is very high and I think one goal for us as a country is if we deploy generative AI to overcome uh, barriers that restrict us and to unlock that potential you know by overcoming language barriers or bringing uh, citizen service more easily to people who are less educated uh, but can now naturally use generative AI to access those services. I think that should be our bar that we are trying to hit. But this also the technology moves very fast. So I'm sure in a year, two years, there will be new kinds of technology, especially with agentic AI coming and then multimodal AI, which is going to open up new bars that we want to hit. A quantum ecosystem is slowly but steadily emerging in Amaravati. I'm joined by one of the core committee members here who will be looking into and uh, what is going to be part of the ecosystem. Sir, thank you so much for speaking with us. First and foremost, uh, Anil Garu just wanted, in layman's term, explain uh, what is going to be quantum technology and how important it is going to be in the near future. Quantum technology is actually uh, what we call quantum 2.0. We have been using quantum technology for the last 100 years in different forms. The most common form that we know of are lasers. And uh, the simple laser pointer is a manner of quantum technology. However, what we are trying to do now is to manipulate the quantum technology to solve problems that we have not been able to do before. And quantum computing is trying to do that by uh, leveraging the power of uh, quantum 
effects in particles and solve problems of relevance to society. Uh, how do you think it's important enough in the near future? Uh, do you think this is going to create an ecosystem where not only startups but from the government side and also other areas, P4 that Mr. Naidu has talked about, uh, is this going to be part of a P4 project as well, that is the public, private and people's project? Completely. I think uh, without having all the four partners in P4 working together, it is not possible for us to solve some of these larger problems. Um, I mean, when you start thinking of uh, disease, biology, or uh, even chemistry, photosynthesis, uh, growing uh, plants, farming, all these are actually inherently quantum processes. And the best way to uh, understand them and to improve them is to work with a quantum computer that can simulate those processes. So um, as the government steps in, we also expect the private industries to step in and together they will start solving problems that are completely relevant to the people. And I think the P4 partnership is just uh, waiting to happen and I'm glad Amravati is uh, the place that the government has picked to start this. You know, quantum processing is a, is a very dense subject that not many uh, will be able to understand. But when we talk about uh, in bigger terms, be it quantum processing used in defense or medicine or any of the other major sectors, uh, how do you think India is as compared to the other uh, you know countries in terms of the quantum uh, processing taking place See, i think uh, india is actually ahead of many countries because we have a very large demographic dividend that uh, is also uh, skilled uh, if you look at the number of engineering graduates that we uh, engineering students we graduate each year uh, we have a large number and uh, many of them are aspirational and that aspiration uh, leads them towards new technologies and quantum technologies is one of them. So if you look at the number of people who reach out to us, who are uh, increasingly interested in learning this new technology, uh, that's a very large number and that is why worldwide companies are looking to India to be able to supply them with the manpower to be able to use this new technology. Uh, that being said, um, I don't think one needs to worry about it being too difficult to understand. Uh, today it might seem difficult. But that would have been true of uh, something like a calculator. But today now everybody uses a calculator. So what starts off as an invention and as a novelty, it just takes a little bit of time before it becomes commonplace. So the students who are anyway today looking at careers in software industry could also look at the quantum computer as yet another machine that will help them upskill uh, their aspirations and um, have a good career going forward. To the, uh, you know, startups and to students who are potentially interested in taking up uh, quantum processing, what are the kind of tips that you would like to share to them, uh, you know, so something that will make it easier for them to understand and possibly be the next generators of, you know, quantum processing? So, I come from the belief that uh, we don't walk around saying we will learn quantum computing. I come from the background where I say that you learn your domains. So if you are in a, a civil engineer, you learn civil engineering. You think of the quantum computer as a tool that helps you do better civil engineering. You think of a quantum computer as another tool that will help you do better drug discovery. We don't think around, walk around today saying we will learn how to uh, build a calculator. We just use a calculator to do better, more efficiently at the work that we are currently doing. Similarly, a quantum computer or for that matter even a classical computer is a tool that we use to do become better at the job that we are anyway planning to do. Uh, so the quantum computing is very interdisciplinary today. The applications uh, come from different domains, whether it is domains of biology, biochemistry, uh, materials, uh, logistics, finance. Uh, these all require domain knowledge and so that domain knowledge is still required from the classical engineering or science and management departments and the quantum computer comes as a layer as an additional tool that you can use to do become better at the job that you're doing you know we've seen uh, you know um, it we've seen ai and now we're also seeing quantum uh, that is also taking place in a short while do you think all of these in the near future will become a normal uh, yeah, actually you forgot IoT, that is the other one that uh, comes in, right? So there is this convergence that we talk about of all these technologies. Finally, it's all going to be seamless. The common man should not have to worry about 
what computer is being used or where his data is being stored or how this data is being used. It should be seamless. He's interested in having a better quality of life. And I think that's what we scientists and engineers aspire to provide. So um, I think uh, the convergence is inevitable. Uh, you'll see it happening already with 5G and 6G is already talking of IoT plus quantum and AI. So I think all of this will become seamless in the coming years. The National Quantum Mission, if you are aware, has a very specific, you know, goal. So, so Amravati, uh, the Tech Valley or Amravati Quantum Valley Tech Park is a part of that. So, here, the first part we are focusing is on actually getting a physical quantum computing here and make it available for all the companies, universities, for research, for training and all. So, this will become a hub. That is what we anticipate. And then the immediate... Uh, uh, effect would be on the industry. We expect a lot of industries to come and start using the facilities for doing their core research and also building algorithms using the technology which today are not possible. Particularly we think agri-tech, pharma, medical technology, metallurgy, and logistics, banking, finance, fraud detection, insurance, and transportation, better vehicles, pollution control, and uh, you know disease control and uh, better governance i think these are the areas i think immediate uh, effect would be there and we expect that that will is going to change the game for the state right uh, uh, combined state i think we started the it revolution uh, we lost hyderabad now you know uh, now we want to leapfrog uh, using the quantum technology and we are building the basic uh, elements required for that so, we are building huge data center capacity, as you know that Vizag will become the data park and all. Then we can cater to the, the clients across the world through, you know, cloud by because we are getting a cable landing in Vizag and then a lot of um, data centers are there, uh, going to come up and then the development centers would be there. And, uh, and, and we want uh, to grow with you know, the entire world of the way they are going in quantum technology. We want to leapfrog on that. Be it quantum technology or deep tech and other, uh, you know, uh, interesting developments that are coming in, uh, how evolved do you think we will be able to take it forward to the next step given that, you know, we, we need an active participation, be it from startups, be it from students or even aspirants who are trying to make it in this uh, economy? This is a good ecosystem. So if you have heard, uh, the, the second largest users of the IBM quantum system are Indians. So there is already an interest, there is a demand and all. Now with the facility available, we hope that it will double, triple and you know go to the next level. And the physical uh, system itself is available. As I said, we are creating an ecosystem. I said that we are creating capacity for around 90,000 people, which includes big companies, startups, you know, commercial companies which only really require the technology for doing that. Uh, niche areas. Niche areas as well. We are looking into defense. We are looking into other areas as well. How has the response been from, uh, you know, so far? There's a, there's a lot of interest, lot of buzz. And in fact, uh, once this was announced, there's a large number of other companies who want to come. Uh, see, they are having competing technologies, right? So this is an uh, area which is evolving. So there is something called a logical qubits that has come. So these they build on the physical ones. So that kind of technologies are coming. Now other companies are also showing a lot of interest. You will see that in the next 30 to 60 days, at least another two, three companies will also come with a similar kind of setup we are doing with IBM and all. Other companies will come. Of course, the technology is limited. Our, uh, the, the bouquet of companies available is in a single digit. So we are working with all of them trying to get as many as possible. Because the ecosystem is created, all the companies will try to converge there because human talent will come there, R&D will come there. The way Silicon Valley has developed, the way high tech city to an extent has developed. So we expect all these technologies to converge and come. Silicon Valley in Bangalore, we've seen, uh, you know, high tech in Hyderabad. Do you believe quantum is going to be Amravati's, uh, you know, starling? It's going to be more than that. So we are going to not only uh, do only quantum, as you said that um, deep tech, uh, AI, Gen AI, we are going big on this. So uh, if you see, we are creating those elements. 
storage, huge storage we are creating, you know. So the kind of storage that we are going to create uh, in Vizac itself, the committed storage still late is around 4.1 gigawatts. Like, so this is more than what the country all put together has and many times over. So, so we are just looking at the next 15, 10 years horizon and building infrastructure for that. And then tying up with uh, good universities, you know, already in discussion with Tokyo University, Purdue Universities. We had one round of talks. Next month they are coming. Uh, once they come, we'll, we'll start with a, an MOU with them and then ensure that uh, campuses are established here and then they start courses in the cutting edge technologies like deep tech and AI, you know, generational AI and all that. As you can see, Amravati's. Uh, quantum ecosystem is something that is slowly but very strongly taking shape. In a near future, not only is it going to be a reality, uh, but also one of the pivotal measures in terms of leading India's quantum ecosystem up to a notch. With video journalist Prasad, Apur Vajay Chandran, India Today. A quantum ecosystem is slowly but steadily emerging in Amaravati. I'm joined by one of the core uh, committee members here who will be looking into and uh, what is going to be part of the ecosystem. Sir, thank you so much for speaking with us. First and foremost, uh, Anil Garu just wanted, in layman's term, explain uh, what is going to be quantum technology and how important it is going to be in the near future. Quantum technology is actually uh, what we call quantum 2.0. We have been using quantum technology for the last 100 years in different forms. The most common form that we know of are lasers. And uh, the simple laser pointer is a manner of quantum technology. However, what we are trying to do now is to manipulate the quantum technology to solve problems that we have not been able to do before. And quantum computing is trying to do that by... Uh, leveraging the power of uh, quantum effects in particles.